Finally, before we go, the Australian astronaut Andy Thomas has stated that prior to NASA's return to the moon, they will be launching an unmanned probe equipped with a homing beacon to help guide the new altar down to the surface. Thomas also stated that this probe will also be equipped with a video camera to record Altar's lunar touchdown. The Altar will use four Pratt & Whitney RS-10 engines, each capable of delivering 25,000 pounds of thrust. With four of these engines firing together, this would be 100,000 pounds of thrust. Almost the same amount as two Boeing 747 engines operating at full thrust. If these engines run at full thrust for more than 20 seconds, they'll start to rip up the runway. NASA claims that in order to land Altar, it will require these engines to throttle down to 10% thrust, which is 10,000 pounds of thrust. The same amount of thrust that the LEM has at maximum. Because Gene Cernan assures us that 3,000 pounds of thrust is enough to dig a crater large enough to bury the LEM, and Armadillo's 500 pound thrust engine dug a hole in concrete, imagine what 10,000 pounds of thrust will do. Since NASA claims there'll be a video camera waiting on the surface, be sure to have your VCR ready. Because we know 3,000 pounds of thrust is enough to dig a crater, we should expect to see the Altar's landing site torn up by its four descent engines. NASA has been known to edit out discrepancies in their photos. So the question remains, will there be no blast crater under the lander? Or will NASA actually get it right this time? I'll keep you posted. Right, first, let's check play weight of your stylus. Check it down.